Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Garden State Growing and I am Eric. Now today's video is going to be a special video. It's not actually about gardening, but it has everything to do with your garden. So <laughs> Okay, so you've planned out your entire garden. You've spent months. You started way back in January and February. You have a greenhouse inside with grow lights to start your seedlings. You have a greenhouse in your backyard to let your plants grow up nice and tall. You planned out what is going to go in what bed, what areas are shady, what areas are sunny, what areas get full sun, what areas get part sun. You do everything perfect. You amend the soil and everything else. And then the birds come. Dun, dun, dun. So, a lot of people have issues with birds eating their fruits, their vegetables, and the seedlings that they just planted in the ground. And they didn't even get a chance to grow up. And people will hate birds and they will try to shoo them away and do uh, ridiculous things to get rid of them. But when the reality is, is Birds are fantastic for your garden. They will go through your plants and they will pick up the tomato hornworm or the cabbage looper or other malicious caterpillars and aphids that are bad for your plants, okay? Now you're saying, but how could they be good for your garden if they're gonna eat all your tomatoes, if they're gonna eat all your strawberries, if they're gonna take all your seedlings away? Well, the, rea the reality is that birds don't want your vegetables. They don't want your fruit. They really could care less. They want two things. They want food in the form usually of seeds, okay? And they want water. So let me show you what I have here in my garden. Okay. So up there, not only did I do a monumentally stupid thing by putting a birdhouse up near my garden, I put up a bird condo. There is four birdhouses on each level on each side for a total of 16 birdhouses there. Now this birdhouse was designed for the purple martin, which I do know lives in this area. And the purple martins are great for getting rid of mosquitoes. Uh, they say that they can eat upwards of 5,000 mosquitoes. One purple martin can eat up to 5,000 mosquitoes a night. Uh, don't take my word on it. That's from 15 years ago. Now, that being said, when I did put that, you know, bird condominium up, I did not have gardens directly below it. Uh, this was 15 years ago when I was a much, much, much smaller gardener. But now that they have established a home here and they come back every year to have their little babies up in there, I'm not gonna move it. I'm not gonna destroy their habitat. And I actually like having them in my garden, okay? So what I've had in the past and what I'm gonna do again this year, okay, is I'm gonna expand on what I already had in my backyard because my growing space has expanded to take up not just this side of the yard, but the other side of the yard and the back of the yard as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hang up a bird feeder and here it is. It's just a nice little simple bird feeder, nothing special. I picked it up at the depot for 10, 15 bucks, something like that. And I'm gonna fill it with this wild blend bird food. It's got sunflower seeds uh, and a whole bunch of other seeds that birds love. You don't want to just put up a bird feeder anywhere because when birds feed, they're very messy and they're going to drop a lot of these seeds. And these seeds are still usually very viable. And if you have it right above somewhere where you're growing in your garden, it's going to drop a lot of seeds in your garden and you're going to want to grow a lot of stuff you really don't want. It, I don't know exactly the, the different seeds that are in here and I really don't care. All I know is I don't want them anywhere above my garden. So you want to find a space that is going to be open but away from everything. If seed drops in the grass or, or anywhere else and stuff starts to grow, you really don't care. You're going to mow it over anyway. The spot that seemed perfect for me is, oh, bug in my ear, Ooh. is right there in that corner. Okay, so I'm gonna make a little uh, two by four T post. Uh, it's real simple, screw it together and 
put it up and I'm gonna hang the bird feeder over where it's on this side, the grass side of the lawn. And then this way, if they drop a whole bunch of seeds or even if some goes over into the mulch side, I'm not really gonna care. It's not gonna end up in my garden. It's not gonna compete with my vegetables and it's gonna keep the birds happy. All right, I thought I'd take the time to uh, just let you know that you don't have to go through all of this to keep birds out of your backyard. Oh, well, what I mean by that is putting up like a, a store-bought bird feeder. There is a ton of different options out there. I encourage you to go to like Pinterest or just Google it. You can use like corn cobs that you smeared with uh, peanut butter and then rolled in seeds or uh, pine cones or another really great uh, thing that you can turn into a bird feeder. Now that being said, having bird feeders and bird baths will prevent a lot of different birds from uh, devastating your garden. It doesn't mean it's going to completely stop them. So if you're still worried in the end that birds are going to take over your garden and destroy your garden, then I do encourage you to go out and buy some uh, bird netting and put up some hoops over your garden beds and throw up that netting and then you don't have to worry about it. You want to have your bird feeder a little bit high and you want it away from uh, a lot of other obstructions like trees and stuff like that. You want the birds to be able to find it and recognize it as a food source and keep on filling it up. Every time you come out, check it make sure that you fill it up uh, to, so the birds know that there's a steady supply of food here and they don't have to waste their time going through your vegetables. All right, that looks good. That looks good right there. So I'm going to fill up my bird feeder with my bird seed, hang it up, and be done with it. Okay, so I have my bird feeder here. And as you can see, it comes with these little plugs that you can add. So I did put one up here, and I'm going to put one on the other side. This is just so the bird seed is going to last a little longer and be forced to fall down. They still have one, two, three, four one two three four ports to feed from so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over to i have just this tote that i've been using to mix soil in and stuff like that but when i pour this into my bird feeder i want it over the tote so any spillage goes into the tote not all over my ground it's wasted and possibly throw a whole bunch of feed Okay, I'm really glad that I did it over my tote because, yes, there is a tremendous amount of seed that fell, almost an entire handful of seed that fell into the tote that would have been in my ground and I would have been growing random plants everywhere. So, now I'm going to store my seed underneath my deck because it's nice and cool under there. I'm going to keep it in this container to keep any rodents out of it. All right, so I'm just going to take my full bird seeder that I have here and I'm going to hang it up and I'm going to put it on this side. Like I said, because if any of this seed falls here, I don't care. They have the two little lats up top that the birds can hang out and roost on. Like I said, it doesn't need to be anything fancy. Just get it, just get it up. Just protect your plants. Okay, so now we took care of the one problem with birds, and that was food. Now, different birds like different food, so if you want to attract something different, like I know I have uh, what I believe to be finches up in that little condominium I got there. They'll love this feed, but they do also sell uh, just the black sunflower seeds, and they also sell mealworms. Uh, mealworms, I think, are best for bringing in like blue jays and robins and stuff like that. Plus, all other birds like eating the mealworms. They are dry, they're not alive, they're not gonna squirm all over the place. But you can have that, and then they also sell what's called, um, I think it's called a, a lard block, or, or something like that, and it's basically a block of like fat that has a bunch of seeds pressed into it, and that will attract other birds. So, maybe you wanna look up what type of birds you have in your area, and tailor 
the feeder to them. So maybe you don't want to use seeds, you want to use that lard block, or maybe you want to use the mealworms, or you want to do or what you want to do is that nice little sugar water glass vase hummingbird type feeder. If you've got hummingbirds in your area, I don't think I do here. That's why I didn't put up a hummingbird feeder, but I just might because they're only like 15 bucks and maybe I do and they just don't come to my yard because I don't feed them. All right, so let's get to the second problem with having birds in your yard and that is watering. They need bird baths. Simple solutions. You can literally take one of the pans from underneath your, your pots, uh, your planters that catches water. You can buy one of those for a couple bucks and just nail it to a two by four and put it out somewhere in your yard and that's fine. I went ahead on Amazon and I ordered three bird baths because I want to put one in each section. I want one over here. I want one in the back of my yard and I want one over there on that side of the yard where I'm going to be doing my strawberries I believe and I've got my peach tree over there as well. So I want to make sure that these birds have plenty of moisture so they don't have to bother my plants or eat my tomatoes to get what they need. Okay everyone, I actually want to get into the shade for a little bit because it's, it's a warm day. This is one of them days that'll fool you and, and your brain starts going plant your tomatoes Eric and then your wife comes up and says don't be an idiot Eric keep them in the greenhouse for another week or two thank you Nicole love you oh look at this it's got two little birdies so the other birdies get fooled into thinking that this is a real bird and they come down now nah, I, I seriously doubt birds are that stupid that should be safe I'll fill it up with water now when I was doing a little bit of research on bird baths and trying to find the cheapest nicest ones I could find uh, I noticed that they also sell like uh, bird elixirs, I guess you'd call it. Uh, it's little additives that you can put into the water that have like calcium in it that help the birds with uh, you know strong bone growth and feather development. But the reality is, is I'm not a bird watcher and I'm not going to be out here with a telephoto lens taking pictures of all these birds. I just want them to have water so they don't eat my vegetables. So I'm not going to use any of those additives. But what I am going to do is, at least once a season, I am going to take this and I'm going to scrub it down with some soap and then wash it out real well so that any bird poop or sediment or anything that gathers up in here doesn't get out of control with bacteria and actually hurt the birds worse than help the birds. So, so what I have here is my hanging bird bath made in China. That's very unfortunate that we're buying everything from China. Uh, people say buy American. Well, when you know when American starts making stuff again, I'll definitely buy American. But until then, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Chain back on, and as you can see, it's it's actually quite pretty. It's it's not that bad. It's small. You know, it's not gonna hold that much water, so I'll just have to check it every day. But uh, it's gonna look beautiful hanging from my cherry tree. So let's take it over there. So I think this nice steady branch right here is going to do just fine. Okay, it's not over anything that I really am concerned about. It's actually quite close to the condominium that's right up there. And I think that's going to be a fine spot for it. Like I said, I'm going to have the other bird baths around the yard as well. Okay, look at that one. It's uh, blue and yellow and green and sparkly. That's really honestly, I love the way that looks. I know I'm a big dude, but that is really pretty. I really like the way that turned out. So now it's hooked on the bottom there. As you can see, the clamps, three piece clamps come here and here. Nice and tight. All right, everyone. Uh, I've got some cleaning up to do now and I've got to move along. Maybe get my peas into the garden today. Uh, they're gonna be direct sown. Even if we do get a little cold day, it's not gonna bother them any. So I hope you enjoyed this content about birds in your garden, knowing that they are not a pest and they're not here to destroy your garden. They are beneficial to your garden. They will eat the tomato hornworm, the cabbage loopers, and aphids, and other insects that are on your tomato plants or any other vegetable plant that you have. You're just going to give them what they need. And what they need is food in the form of seed, lard, 
Drink of water for the hummingbirds. Uh, or mealworms to invite in the robins and the blue jays. I hope I help to change your mind about birds in your garden. That they are beneficial. They All right, guys, I just wanted to show you, see? I'm sorry, I got this zoomed in because I'm trying to stay at least, you know, 10, 15 feet away from the birds. But I had just put this up uh, two days ago and the birds already found it. They're already eating off of it. And it's raining out right now and they still don't care. They want their food and they're gonna come and get it.